Hello, my front end friends. One of the hardest things to do as a student, hobbyist, beginner, even intermediate and advanced devs run into this issue of what do we build next? And it's one of the reasons I actually love websites like Front End Mentor and I code this because it helps people get past that block. But the problem is, especially for beginners and people who are looking to build up their portfolio, is you don't really want to put a whole bunch of front end mentor projects in that portfolio of yours because everyone else is also doing those same projects. So if you are doing front end mentor projects, I do have a suggestion for you though, which is taking things to the next level. Even if you take a really simple challenge from front end mentor, you can find a ways to really step them up and do a lot more with them. For example, if you look at this really simple one that's right here, you can add a drop down menu for the user to allow them to change color themes, or you can make things even more dynamic for the color theme by having a color picker on the page and that allows the user to actually update the accent color and everything will sort of shift around with that. Of course, you could then save that to local storage uh, and have some different options there. You could even create multiple versions of the card to account for different situations, like what if there's no image at the top? What if you have multiple tags? What happens if there's long titles or long descriptions or really short descriptions? You know, show it outside of the context of this one very individual thing and do a lot more with it. You could even create a form that a user could fill out and then they click add form and it populates a new card based on all of that form data that they just entered. And that's just a few ideas of something you can do with a very simple challenge. So please do remember that anytime you're going to be doing free challenges that you found online, or even if you're following a tutorial from a YouTube video where you're just going through the steps of what that, you know, the tutorial is showing you, anything like that, this person reviewing your portfolio has seen the exact same project that you're working on thousands of times. And you wanna find ways that you can differentiate your own work from all of these things that other people are using as well. It's also why I wouldn't really suggest doing regular weather apps or regular to-do apps necessarily in your portfolio. They're really good for learning the basics of something, but they're the types of things that everybody builds. And if it's just a standard weather app or to-do app, or it's a standard, I code this challenge just based on the design you have or front-end mentor challenge or whatever it is, it's just going to blend in with all of the other work that other people are also showing off. Now, don't get me wrong, just like the to-do app and the weather app are really good for learning, doing these challenges from front-end mentor and other sites like it are also fantastic. They're really good ways to start doing more and getting that practice in and having a design so you're not worried about, well, what do I need to build? It's fantastic to get past that step. But when you're building these, once you're finished it, you know, follow along with it, but don't limit yourself to the scope of the challenge. Doing that doesn't just get you learning how to build a layout that you have in front of you, but it also helps flex your creative muscles. Like if you're doing a form that the user fills out and it's populating it, you have to start thinking about a lot more things there. What if a user doesn't fill in one of the fields? How do you have to handle that? What if the user puts really long text, like I mentioned before, if you have long text and short text, you have to figure out ways of handling all this. And that also gives you a lot more to talk about if ever you're showing off some work about the different challenges that you came across, the different things you thought about that could be problematic and how you came up with solutions for them instead of just being, well, I followed the design as closely as I could. And as I said, as you're doing all of this, you might come up with better ideas or bigger ideas for other projects that you could build out and you know, be inspired to create something that's not just the challenge that someone else has already completed as well. Though I do know that coming up with ideas for personal projects that are a bit larger in scope is definitely one of those blockers that people <laughs> come across because it's one of those pieces of advice that you often get is, well, just build stuff. And while I do think that's solid advice that you need to build things, it's that idea side of things where it can be harder, why sites like Frontend Mentor and I Code This are fantastic for getting past those types of problems. But when you do want to have that personal project, again, using those as inspiration can really help, but sometimes you want to build out something and you just don't have any ideas for it. You might know the skills that you want to be practicing, but you're not entirely sure about the what to build with those skills so you can get that practice in. And if you're curious about that side of things a little bit more, it's definitely sometimes a little bit harder, but it's something I'm going to be talking about in my newsletter next week. So if you want to know my thoughts on that and know a bit about a personal project I'm currently working on, the link to that newsletter is down below if you'd be curious about hearing a little bit more about how I come up with ideas for personal projects. Uh, and it's also, it's not only about coming up with ideas for personal projects, but it's also coming up with ideas for personal projects that are achievable and that you can do with not too much time on your hands because I know we're all busy or a lot of us are busy. Uh, so those are some of the things I'll be talking about. Again, the link to my newsletter 
is just down below. And if you don't want to subscribe to that or you just want to watch some more YouTube videos and you do like front end mentor projects, you might want to watch some tutorials I did building them out. And I've got a playlist of videos where I do just that that is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.